quick a video explanation of listing documents. I find it helpful if we can have gone if we go through these before our actual meeting, so that uh, I can answer most of your questions through the video. You can review the documents, which I will attach to the email I'm sending this video in, and then we can discuss them ahead of time so that when we actually have to get down to the signing, it's not a three hour appointment, it's an hour and a half appointment. Um, the first document is called the Disclosure of Representation and Trading Services. And what it does is it explains the nature of the agency relationship and the relationship you have with your agent as a client and what you would have as a non-client. It's very specific. As a client, you get loyalty. Your realtor acts only in your best interests. Unrepresented, no loyalty. Realtor has to give full disclosure. They have to must tell you everything they know that might influence your decision in a transaction. If you're unrepresented, no duty of full disclosure. Uh, we have a duty to avoid conflicts of interest. The uh, range of conflicts of interest has expanded dramatically, especially from a listing standpoint. Um, at open houses, I can't solicit information from people. Anything I gather from them could be considered a conflict of interest, so that's a problem. Other scenarios where that might work, conflicts come up is if I have a buyer who wants to buy one of my listings. I can't represent two people. Dual agency is now illegal in the province of BC. So we have scenarios that could play out based on that. If that ever comes up, we'll, we'll go through the documents and explain what could happen and we'll, we'll work through it then. Um, I also have a duty of confidentiality. So that duty runs for my entire lifetime. As an agent, we learn a lot more about our clients than most people would know. And we're not allowed to tell anybody anything ever. So that confidenti confidentiality runs forever. If you're unrepresented, zero confidentiality. After we go through this page, you're gonna, it's going to say here, I am representing you as my client. That will be my name and my brokerage. I will sign and I will date. Your name or names will go here. Initials and dates. That's page one. The next page is privacy, notice, and consent. This explains why we collect your personal information. Um, when you're selling your home, the only place people will see your name is if they're writing an offer, uh, your name will show up on the listing. Uh, the realtor will be able to see your name on the listing unless we hide it through privacy protection, but they will require title, which I have to put title online and on the title, your name will be there. We can potentially redact your name if you're somebody famous or if you don't want your name on there. Um, but when they actually write the contract, they're going to ask for an actual copy of title. And sometimes we can send that over unredacted after we have an accepted offer. But th that's who's going to see it. And then during the process of the transaction, uh, listing agent, buying agent, uh, the conveyancing departments at both offices, the managing brokers at both offices, and then the lawyers or notaries from both sides. Um, this form explains why we collect it. The other place where we're going to Collect your information is on the FinTrack form. FinTrack is for, it's anti-terrorism, anti-money laundering. It's identity verification. I'm going to sit down across from you, across the table from you. I'm going to fill out your contact information and then I'm going to use a piece of your identification to verify. I'm going to look at it. I'm going to look at you and I'm going to say, yes, that's definitely them. And then I just have to fill out the information listed on the driver's license, the passport, whatever it may be, and verify your identity like that. That sits in our office for seven years as mandated by FinTrack and nobody's looking at your information. The one thing, the two things that they've added here, that most of my clients initial are opt outs. And what these mean is if you initial them, the person who they're talking about here cannot contact you. So for 2C, these are the two that my clients generally initial. Other realtors may communicate with you to determine if you require additional real estate services. If you don't want other realtors calling you, we initial here. 2D, the boards and other realtors or their brokerage and survey firms on their behalf may communicate with you to participate in surveys. If you don't want to do surveys, we're going to initial here. Once we go through this form, your name will be printed here. You will sign and you will date. My name will be here and my brokerage will be here. This is the FinTrack form I was just talking about. It'll be your address here that we're listing. My name and uh, brokerage will be here. We will... Uh, write the date that I'm verifying your identity. There's you're going to be your full pertinent information. There's the driver's license or per, passport information. Once I've got those things written down, 
I'm going to say yes, they are low risk as a Canadian citizen or resident physically present. And I'm going to take that we're doing this to uh, purchase or sell a residential property. Then we get to the listing contract. So this is more simplified than the contract to purchase and sale. This is gonna be your information. This is gonna be my brokerage's information. This is gonna be what's called the effective date, so the date we go live online. This can be any date. So most of the time I try to put it two weeks out so we can have our photos, video, um, uh, print materials all done and ready to go. Uh, but sometimes people want their home listed right away. So in that case, we could be listing in two days. So that'll be the date. Expiry date is gonna be when the listing expires. Most of the time we do them for 90 days. If we're trying for a very high price, that means we're looking for a very specific buyer. It's gonna take longer to sell. We'll extend that time. It could be six months, it could be a year. It all depends on what you as sellers wanna do. This is a section for you to read at the seller hereby. Um, this will be the property information. So this will be your address, the property identifier number I will get off of title as will be the legal description. So the legal description um, is supposed to be written in as seen on title. So I will buy the title first and I will write the legal description in exactly as it's written on title. Number three, we're gonna write our list price. What we're hoping to get, list prices are not guaranteed. So depending on what our pricing strategy is, we're going to have a number of possible outcomes and we'll go through that when we sit down and actually write the contract out. So some people want to write a low price, get as many offers as they can, basically hold an auction. Some people want to price it at market value and then we would expect the home to sell in the standard number of days on market that the statistics are showing. Other people like to price their home really high, in which case we may never sell it or we're waiting for that specific buyer to come in and write an offer. We're gonna try and get as high as we can. Again, these are definitions. Go through them and write down any questions you have. I'm happy to answer them. It's a little monotonous if I go through all of these right away. The next section is for commission. So, um, I charge a not standard because we're not allowed to have any standard commissions, but I charge the same for everyone. So 7% on the first 100,000, and 2.5% on the balance. I can't have anything written in on these blanks when I send them to you, which is why there's not, but I will go through the numbers with you now and then we'll go through them again when we're actually sitting down at the table. Um, the buying brokerage, if there is a cooperating brokerage, I pay 3.22% on the first 100,000 and 1.15 on the balance. So this is the total payable. This is the buyer's share. My share is the listing agent is gonna be 3.78% on the first 100,000 and 1 1.35 on the balance. It works out to about a 54%, 46% split. It covers my uh, costs for marketing the property. If there is no cooperating brokerage, the listing brokerage will obtain the entire amount of the remuneration paid uh, pursuant to clause 5D being an amount equal to, and that would be this amount. Generally speaking, to this point in my career, I've never had somebody unrepresented write an offer on a property, and if anybody asks to, I refer them out. I've done that three times where I refer them out to another agent. It's better for you, it's better for me, um, way less risk if we're negotiating appropriately with another agent. Um, designated agency, I'm going to be your designated agent. This talks about a bunch of definitions. I will do X, you will do Y. More definitions you can see here. Conflicts of interest is expanded. Collection of personal information is expanded. Termination of the contract. So in the event that you don't want to sell your house anymore, we'll do a cancellation and it'll have cancel protection. So what it means is if you decide you don't want to sell, um, we're just going to keep the home protected so that our broker, so you don't sell with somebody else and our brokerage doesn't get doesn't lose out on a commission that we had a contract for if you decide you don't want to work with me anymore that's a different scenario altogether we will terminate the listing when i take listings my goal is to sell my clients homes if i'm not the right person to do it and sometimes that's the case it's a team thing and if we don't 
jive on that level, um, which has only happened once. And I was perfectly happy to give the uh, seller a full release and let them go and buy with somebody else, sell with somebody else. I apologize. Um, there's some miscellaneous provisions here. Signed, sealed, delivered. It'll be the date. The seller declares that they're a resident of Canada. Sellers sign my signature, my brokerage's signature, and we're all signed up. Now there's uh, something called a Schedule A and we'll go through it more in detail when we get to it. Um, it's not a, it, it's different for every contract depending on whether it's a strata property or not. So I'll go through that with you more in detail. This is just what I'm contract contractually obligated to provide in terms of service. It also lists the things I can and can't do according to you. So uh, if I, I'm gonna put on there that I wanna be able to put your photos on Instagram, Facebook, I wanna put the video on YouTube so I can market it uh, as, to the best of my abilities, um, you're gonna initial that yes, you can do that and those will be listed on here. The last page is the removal of subjects. So when somebody's written an offer on our property, we're going, they're gonna have subject to clauses. These are clauses that will have a date and they will have a certain period of time to fulfill them. If they fulfill them and they're satisfied with them, they're going to remove those subjects using this form. Uh, when we get all of the subjects removed, it's a very happy day. We're gonna get this form signed. We're gonna get a deposit check, a copy of a deposit check by way of a photo or a scan and then we're sold firm and we're pumped. Um, we can either then re remove subjects on the home that we're trying to buy, or if you're just selling, you can celebrate. Um, those are the documents, and hopefully you have lots of questions, and I can't wait to answer them for you.